We're going to destroy evolution in five key points. Now, you may wonder why I'm about to demolish this guy's critique of evolution, which we all know is this, and yet my video is titled Explaining the Big Bang, which is this. Look, I know they're different, you know that, but clearly Kennedy Hall here, our latest Golden Crocoduck nominee, doesn't. So strap into your seats because you're about to enter the crazy, mixed-up world of creationists, and along the way... I'm going to look at the real science of space, time, energy and matter in a way that even creationists can understand it. So let's look at the first key point that destroys what Kennedy thinks is the theory of evolution. We're going to destroy evolution in five key points. So number one, the Big Bang. You've heard of the Big Bang. The Big Bang is the idea that 13-ish billion years ago, maybe longer, uh, depending on the theory and depending on what you... Doesn't matter. It's actually quite simple to find a way to debunk this idea of the Big Bang. So the idea that there was a universe that popped out of nothing. Well, here's the problem. Yeah, the problem is that's not what the physics says. If you're going to debunk a scientific theory, you at least need to know what the theory is. It's not just that this isn't the theory of evolution, it's not even the theory of cosmic inflation, which is what everybody else calls the Big Bang. That's starting off with a straw man. It's like me making up some nonsense idea that creationists believe the universe was breathed into existence by a deity, who then made the first man out of mud and the first... Sorry, just a minute. Hello? What, that is what you believe? You're kidding. I made it up as a joke. You certainly are. OK, thanks, Sparky. No, oh, I love you too. OK, it turns out I can't even make up a more ridiculous straw man than the actual beliefs of creationists. So, back to Kennedy's version of the Big Bang. According to him, the theory says the universe popped out of nothing. That's not exactly what the science shows. In cosmology, the nothing described by Kennedy is actually something called singularity. We'll see what that means in a minute, but first, here's another Golden Crocoduck nominee praying he'll be able to explain singularity, and at least he manages to get the science half right. In the beginning, an explosion from an infinitely dense hot point created time, space, and nature. He's correct in saying singularity was an infinitely dense hot point, but it didn't explode. Singularity contained all the space of the universe, and it was that space that expanded. And the universe is still expanding to this day. We don't say the universe is exploding. Then Matt Powell makes his own straw man, just like Kennedy, and even contradicts himself by saying this infinitely dense hot point was filled with particles. And if this infinitely dense hot point exploded, it would only shoot out smaller particles than what was contained in the center. No, there were no particles contained in the center of singularity. Singularity didn't even have a center. Both men were nominated for a Golden Crocoduck, awarded for the biggest breach of the Ninth Commandment in pursuit of the creationist cause for making exactly the same misrepresentation of science. And if you don't know what the Ninth Commandment is, here's Father Dan O'Reilly to explain it. The Ninth Commandment is you shall not covet your neighbor's spouse. No, that isn't it at all. Back to the seminary with you, Father. The Ninth Commandment says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. In other words, don't lie. So before we continue with the misrepresentations, let's take a look at what a century of real science has taught us about the Big Bang, so far at least. To understand singularity, let's start with how a black hole is formed. Stars keep in shape because of a balance between heat energy, which forces them to expand, and gravity, which forces them to contract. As a large star uses up the last of its fuel, heat builds up to the point where it explodes. Yes, here we can use the word explode. What remains gives in to gravity and collapses in on itself. As this ball of gas continues to collapse, it becomes so dense and the force of gravity becomes so great that even the atoms get crushed and you get a neutron star. It's a vicious circle. The more matter is crushed and compressed by gravity, the smaller it gets and the more intense the gravitational field. And the more intense the gravitational field, the more matter is crushed and compressed. 
If the star is massive enough, this process keeps going until everything gets shrunk to a small point, which is so dense that even light can't overcome gravity and escape. This has a number of effects. Einstein discovered that space and time are part of the same fabric and that gravity warps both space and time. If we could see that effect in a planet orbiting the Sun, space would look something like this. We'll put it into two dimensions to make it easier to visualize. A black hole is so much denser than our Sun that it warps space-time to an extreme degree. Now, scale that up to not just a star, but an entire universe collapsing in on itself. Space is warped to an infinite degree. What about time? Well, Einstein showed that time is also affected by gravity. It slows down the closer it is to massive objects, because the gravitational field is more intense. So, in infinitely dense singularity, time would slow infinitely, in other words, to a point where it stops completely. So it's nothing even remotely close to a spinning record made of vinyl. Singularity has no particles. It effectively has no space, because space has been warped into an infinitely small point, and no time. Is that nothing? Well, unless you can get your head around a universe consisting of no space and no time, you can pretty much call it whatever you want. But just reducing all this, which are calculations related to the state of the universe one billion trillionth of a second after it started, to popped out of nothing, suggests that you have no clue how to debunk any of the physics, so it's easier to coin a term that a five-year-old can understand and then have a stab at debunking that. But by the way, if you aren't familiar with Einstein's theories, don't be put off by the idea that it's all highfalutin stuff that only brainiacs understand. Einstein started with simple thought experiments that are novel, absolutely brilliant, and very easy to understand. As I keep repeating, I came bottom of my class at school, and even I understand them. Then, with the help of another physicist, Einstein put them into mathematical form. And each of his ideas made predictions about what we ought to see in experiments, and they were all successfully tested. I really recommend looking at how this was done because understanding how the real universe works is so much more interesting and exciting than dreary made-up stories about talking snakes. Anyway, when the Big Bang happened, space expanded, time began, and energy was released. As Einstein showed, energy and mass are equivalent, so very quickly energy is converted into mass in the form of protons, electrons and other particles, and positively charged protons joined with negatively charged electrons to make... Anyone? Anyone? Yes, a hydrogen atom. These were the first elements. Protons can change into neutrons by the loss of their charge, and two protons, two neutrons, make... Anyone? Anyone? Helium, and of course they're the main components of... These are large bodies in space. They twinkle at night. Anyone know what this is? Stars. And stars get their energy by fusing hydrogen and helium. The fusion continues until stars become factories for all the elements we see around us. So we go from energy to matter in the form of simple particles, which form hydrogen, which form stars, which fuse atoms together to make the elements. Now let's go back to our creationists and see what they make of all this. In essence, there are elements that are present at the time of this Big Bang. But the problem with that is, in order to have these elements, you're going to need something like star fusion, which will create these elements. What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? The first elements were nearly all hydrogen and helium, and you don't need star fusion to make those. Hydrogen is a simple combination of a positively charged proton and a negatively charged electron. We covered this. Or, in some cases, just a simple proton. Helium is a step up. Two protons and two neutrons. But conditions in the first few minutes of the Big Bang were easily hot enough to fuse neutrons and protons into simple helium nuclei, which then acquired electrons to make helium atoms. 
To all the cosmologists out there, please don't tell me I forgot to mention deuterium and how neutrons are made from protons. I'm not giving a full-on physics lecture here, just trying to bust creationist mythology. I'll put all that in the video description if you want that kind of detail. By misunderstanding the nature of different elements, Kennedy Hall then gets into a real tangle. Let's go through that confusing muddle with pictures. So if you have something like star fusion that can create elements, then you have to have things like stars. In order to have things like stars, you're going to have to have something like a universe, which means ultimately you're going to have to explain to me how the Big Bang started from nothing, but at the same time it also needed a universe to begin. Look familiar? So what Kennedy's actually doing is taking the basic sequence of events from Big Bang to stars and elements and trying to make it all sound needlessly confusing. In the end, the only question he has is the question he's already asked. Which means ultimately you're going to have to explain to me how the Big Bang started from nothing. And the answer, as we've seen, is that it started from singularity. It's worth remembering that singularity was discovered by a Christian priest, Georges Lemaitre. If Kennedy has an argument against singularity, he seems strangely reluctant to share it. His video isn't much of a debunk if he doesn't understand what singularity and cosmic inflation are and avoids even mentioning or addressing them. It's like me trying to debunk the Immaculate Conception without mentioning Mary. Or Anne. Look it up. As for our other nominee, Matt Powell, he's having trouble coming to terms with the first step, the basic principle of equivalence of matter and energy. These pieces of energy somehow formed into matter. They morphed themselves into planets, stars, oceans, galaxies. Somehow? The fact that energy and mass are equivalent is hardly new or controversial. It was first proposed by Einstein in a series of calculations that culminated in the famous equation E equals mc squared, and it was shown to devastating effect with the first atomic bomb. This enormous destructive power comes from converting less than a gram of uranium into energy. We can also detect this conversion in a laboratory setting. Positrons and electrons annihilate each other all the time, and their mass is transformed into energy. And the reverse can happen. Energy can be converted into positrons and electrons. And other particles come to that. If you can't get your head around mass and energy being the same, one way to think of it is ice, which we can see, and which is solid, and water vapour, which we can't see, and which is a gas. They're both different forms of the same thing. Here's another way of looking at it. Imagine you're looking at a solid object, and you get smaller and smaller until a single proton is the size of a basketball. Get smaller still, until you're the same size as a photon. On this scale, matter is no longer just a particle, it's a tight bundle of energy. So that's a long-winded way of saying, yes, Matt, energy can be converted into matter, and matter into energy, because they're essentially different forms of the same thing. But now we come back to the creationist favourite debating word, somehow. Somehow they turned into stars, planets and oceans. And somehow suggests Matt doesn't know the explanation. If I said, somehow I feel warmer when I put a coat on, or... I ran over a nail and somehow that gave me a flat tyre, you might wonder if I dropped out of elementary school. There's no somehow about how hydrogen and helium make stars. The process is very well understood. They coalesced from clouds of hydrogen and helium through gravity, and as they compacted, the pressure and temperature got greater, bashing the atoms together until fusion happened. No great mystery about how the planets formed either. They're made from the heavier elements orbiting and accreting around the balls of gas. And what was the other thing? Oceans. Oh, well, oceans are made of water, which is a combination of two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. Quite common in our solar system and abundant on Earth. And then, what was it? Galaxies. Ah, yes. Galaxies are groups of thousands of stars that bunch together, again because of gravity. All of this can be found in junior high school science books, even in Wikipedia if you haven't got the energy to visit a local library. 
It exemplifies the basic problem creationists have when they come up against science. It's not that they don't have the intelligence to understand these physical processes, it's just that they have no idea how science explains these processes in the first place. They think that if star and planet formation is a mystery to them, then it must be a mystery to everybody else. So the only explanation they can come up with is that it happened through the magical breath of an invisible deity, and they can't figure out why everyone else doesn't believe that too. If they studied just up to 10th grade level, they'd be able to point out all kinds of things we don't know. Which is what makes these contestants such worthy nominees for the Golden Crocoduck, along with the nominees I showed in my first video. We'll find out who the winner is, as always, on October 28th, the feast day of the patron saint of lost causes. I'll see you at the gala. And don't forget the charity which I ask you to support in lieu of a Patreon account. It's an innovative scheme that trades healthcare for preserving rainforests, resulting in a huge reduction in deforestation and an increase in health. Details are in the video description, as always.